shades of gray made almost 600 million worldwide. Can Marlon Wayans break off a little piece of that? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Fifty Shades of Black. My stepdad, Ron, is a little overprotective. Are you thinking about marrying her? No. What if she get pregnant? Still no. But hell no. I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the dominant. Show me the worst. <gasps> Service! Ah! Did you break my stool? No. Yes, last year, Fifty Shades of Grey was all anybody was talking about, and a lot of that talk was ridicule. So talk about a perfect opportunity for professional lampooner Marlon Wayans, who's made his entire career spoofing popular films. Sure, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but working in his favor here? As it due to behind-the-scenes squabbling, sequel Fifty Shades Darker was pushed back a year. So hopefully he can not only get moviegoers into the theater who are looking to laugh at Fifty Shades of Grey, but also genuine fans looking for a much-needed holdover until Christian and Anastasia return for reals. And to Wayans' credit, the casting is pretty spot on. Usually playing the clown, he makes a pretty convincing chocolate version of Jamie Dornan, while Callie Hawk definitely seems to be channeling Dakota Johnson with the help of a wig that is on point. Also, a number of recent sexy films aimed at the diverse market have done quite well for themselves at the box office, especially with budgets of around five million, which is exactly the case with Fifty Shades of Black. The Perfect Guy, The Boy Next Door, Addicted, No Good Deed, Tyler Perry's Temptation, that's a real trend. Plus, again, Wayans' entry has the benefit of being a comedy as well. The film also spoofs Magic Mike, but on that note, it's worth noting that franchise, and potentially Fifty Shades of Grey as well, were flashes in the pan that audiences have already forgotten about. Magic Mike XXL collected few singles in its box office G-string, and we'll see how Fifty Shades Darker does two years after the first film's release. So maybe, just maybe, Marlon Wayans is a little too late to the bachelorette party. This was such a weird experience because I went into the theater thinking that this was a spoof of Fifty Shades of Grey, but that is actually not the case. I would say that this movie is 20% a spoof of Fifty Shades of Grey. Like 20% of the time, they're trying to be funny. And they succeed. I laughed out loud a couple of times, but that's it. So what's happening the other 80% of the time? Well, it's actually a spot-on remake of Fifty Shades of Grey, just with a, a black cast. And it was so spot-on, it was like fascinating to watch. I was like, man, not, al not only are you hitting all the, the, the plot points, all the beats of the movie, but the uh, costumes are so, so spot-on that it's like, it's beyond, it's not funny. It's just, it's the same. And the sets were exactly the same. The performances were very, very similar. Uh, and I was kind of uh, wondering like, well, why would you do this then? Uh, I mean, the movie does offer some commentary on uh, the ridiculousness of Fifty Shades of Grey, but also I think it offers some commentary on relationships just as I feel Fifty Shades of Grey does. Uh, so why why would they do this, right? Why, why would Marlon Wayans uh, watch Fifty Shades of Grey, obviously, multiple times to make a painstaking remake. Well, I felt that Marlon Wayans, I got this frustration from him while watching the film that he was like, hey, I could be Jamie Dornan, I could be Channing Tatum, but you're not casting me in this, this type of role because I'm black. And I was like, you know what, Marlon Wayans, having seen you approximate these roles, I think you are pretty darn good. I mean, obviously he's not originating these roles and that's a problem, but I kind of wish that he would be able to find a role outside of his spoofs that he could really sink his teeth into because he's very good here. I mean, he's funny when he needs to be, but again, that's only 20% of the time, but the other 80% of the time, I thought he was like a legitimately good Christian Black. Uh, but then also, just like Fifty Shades of Grey, the real breakout star here, the person who really holds your attention is the female lead. And Callie Hawk, is just sensational here. She is so 
good. Not only is her impersonation of Dakota Johnson like just spot on, and let's not forget that Dakota Johnson really nailed her role in Fifty Shades of Grey. She got a lot of good reviews out of it. She has this uh, How to Be Single movie coming up. I mean, that helped her career, deservedly so. She was very good in Fifty Shades of Grey. And I think that Callie Hawk is very good here. Both of them do not play victims. They play women who are manipulative, very much in control of the situation. You know, it really is a chess game uh, between these two characters. And just like it was in Fifty Shades of Grey, so is the case in uh, Fifty Shades of Black. And Cal so Kelly Hawk not only is good, though, at approximating what Dakota jo Johnson achieved in that film, but she's very good, for instance, when she needs to do the, the comedic stuff, when that pops up. Again, rarely, but she's very good there as well. I was really impressed with her performance. I thought she was great. And again, I felt that they, that, like they were saying, hey, you know, you could have cast a black actress in this role of Anastasia Steele. You could have cast Callie Hawk. And I think you totally could after having seen her performance here. She did the job. Now, just like the actors aren't originating the roles, this isn't originating the idea of Fifty Shades of Grey. So that's, of course, why Fifty Shades of Grey is much more successful, and it's the phenomenon because it's the original. But I think, for instance, if the only reason you didn't see Fifty Shades of Grey was because you felt it was too white, well, here you go. You go see Fifty Shades of Black. That's actually what it is. Uh, you know, just because they added a few jokes here and there, they were able to get away because, you know, copyright law protects spoofs. So because there are a couple of jokes put in here like 20% of the time, uh, they were able to make a black version of Fifty Shades of Grey, you know, quite successfully, I feel. Uh, and, you know, I think that this has a lot of commentary about, oh, this character is like kind of weird and this woman's doing this, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that, I don't know if Marlon Wayans realizes this or not, but Fifty Shades of Grey had that commentary as well. It just wasn't as overt as what Marlon Wayans has done. Uh, but, you know, again, it was a weird experience because I thought I was going to see a comedy and, you know, it's weird to watch like a commercial remake of another recent film, right? You're like, you just remade somebody else's movie. That's crazy. So I, I, I thought, you know, it wasn't like an amazing movie going experience, but I had a good time. It's certainly watchable. It made me laugh out loud a couple of times. And if you've seen Fifty Shades of Grey, I think it's just kind of interesting to see the movie approximated so well by someone else, but also with the cast of a different ethnicity. So uh, the thing is, is that often there are movies where I'm like, man, I wish casting directors would watch this, like with Vampire Academy. I was like, the only reason to watch this movie is if you're a casting director and hopefully you cast um, this Dimitri uh, Russian actor because he's so great. Well, here, I hope casting directors are watching as well, because I really think that Marlon Wayans has a lot more to offer, and he even makes a comment in the movie about Kevin Hart saying, why does Kevin Hart get all the roles? There are other black actors working. And I was like, oh, that, that felt a little real, Marlon. And I think Callie Hawk deserves to get a lot more work. So uh, I hope their agents, and maybe them themselves, are uh, sending uh, streaming links to a lot of casting directors if the casting directors aren't finding it themselves, because they both did a really good job here. Not just comedically, but just in, you know, playing the serious role as well. All right, so that's my review of Fifty Shades of Black. If you've seen the movie, be sure to leave your own thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some other episodes right now.